used to cost a nickel. And a bus ride only used to cost a dime. Pass a look. Them days can be forgotten. The world has gotten rotten. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Every day is getting tougher. And it keeps on getting rougher. A dollar isn't even worth a half a buck. Lots of luck. 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 Jeez, Ma, what are you doing up? Well, I heard you not sleeping again. So I came down, made your warm glass of milk. Milk is for kids, Ma. Milk is for everybody. <laughs> if grown-ups were supposed to have milk, it'd come in a six-pack. Oh, Stanley, what's bothering you? Are you worried about the bills? Nah, bills only keep me up till 2 a.m. It is now 5 o'clock in the morning. Stanley, will you turn down the TV and Lou? You'll wake up Arthur. Oh, it's not loud enough to wake up Arthur. It's only World War II. <laughs> hey, keep it down. Will you, you woke me up? I hope I didn't wake up the flies around your bantro. <laughs> the old needle again, huh, Stan? Just for that, I'm going to get something to eat. Oh, boy. I must be crazy. The only time he don't eat is when he's sleeping, and I had to wake him up. <laughs> boy, Stanley, you sure are cranky since you're in some Stanley, I think I know why it is that you ain't sleeping. Your father used to have a saying, nature never meant for a man to live alone. Come on, Ma, you know I can't support no wife. Why not? Well, because I'm already supporting one. Arthur's. You shouldn't say that, Stanley, just because Arthur is temporarily unemployed. <laughs> Arthur's temporarily unemployed like the Sahara Desert is temporarily out of water. <laughs> That was fast. What'd you do? Put the refrigerator between two slices of bread? <laughs> no, it's already made. Let me see that. That's my Tamara's lunch. <laughs> it only took one bite out of it. One bite? Looks like it was attacked by a shark. <laughs> Here, finish it, finish it. No, oh, I think I'll have a beer to go with it. Now, yeah, come on, Stanley. Drink your nice warm milk. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Anything. Anything. I'll try anything. <laughs> Milk tastes like the cow was coming down with something. Or maybe it's the sleeping pill. <laughs> what sleeping pill? I put one in your milk. Oh, what'd you do? It's five o'clock in the morning. I gotta go to work in two hours. This is gonna knock me out. Well, it's like your father always used to say, if wishes was horses, beggars would ride. <laughs> What has that got to do with me not being able to sleep? Nothing, but your father didn't have no sayings about sleeping. <laughs> oh, no, Ma, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> oh, hello, lost and found. Belmont speaking. Uh, no. No, 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 that wasn't turned in. <clears throat> well, I resent that. If our bus drivers were smart enough to steal, they'd be in politics. Hiya, Stan. How you doing, mommy? Hey, Stan, you look terrible. Thanks for telling me. I won't enter no beauty contest. Come on, take it easy. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, I'm really sorry. I'm not myself. I, I, I haven't had a good night's sleep in two weeks. Hey, maybe you ought to see a doctor. I did. I passed the company physical last month. Don't you remember? Yeah, but you know, there's other kinds of sick besides physical. <laughs> Are you calling me Looney Tunes? <laughs> no. I just think maybe you ought to pay a visit to the company psychiatrist. I lose a little sleep. By the way, you got me in a rubber room. <laughs> hey, I ain't saying no shrink. Okay. You're my best friend. I gotta tell you something. Wow. People are starting to talk about you upstairs. Upstairs? 
You mean on the fourth floor? Yeah, you know who's on the fourth floor of the bus company. Yeah, the big wheels. Mm. Right. So what are they saying about me? Well, for one thing, they've been saying you're very nasty to the people coming here in the Lost and Found. Me? Nasty? See? Just like that. So nasty, in fact, they're thinking about putting you back to driving a bus where the passengers are used to it. Oh. Back to driving no bus? Not after I worked my way up to down here. Yeah. That would really be a sad waste of an intellect. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. But you got to promise not to tell the other guys. Okay, how do I get in touch with this? Uh, this uh, his number's in a company directory. Uh, 5665. Five, six, six, five. You know what that spells out on the dial? What? Kook. <laughs> and that's exactly the way it is. So, Doc, I don't know if I'm cranky at the job because I got insomnia or I got insomnia because I'm cranky at the job. You know? I mean, maybe I'm going nuts. But here I am telling you, uh, you're in the nut business. Mr. Belmont, did I detect just a little note of anger in your voice? Me? Angry? No, uh, I'm known far and wide as a pussycat. <laughs> Perhaps you feel ambivalent. No, uh, this here chair is very comfortable. Thank you. Uh, what are you getting at, Doc? Well, you see, very often, the patient's anger directed toward the psychiatrist is actually intended for someone else. Yeah? Oh, yes, of course. This anger, of course, is repressed because the patient is unwilling or unable to face the real uh, object of his rage uh, for fear of hurting the other person, uh, thereby causing himself uh, to suffer a subconscious guilt, uh, which, of course, manifests itself in neurotic symptoms. Uh, is that of any help to you? Yeah, I think so, because I'm starting to fall asleep right here. Ah, uh, Mr. Belmont, I think that is a desire to escape your real problems. No kidding. Uh -huh. Which, I have a feeling, originate in your home. The home, huh? Uh -huh. Yes, and I think I know the specific cause of your symptoms. Well, go ahead. You're the doctor. It's your wife. My wife? Yes! Yes, it's a very typical story. Perhaps she's grown unattractive and takes refuge in constantly eating, and becomes lazy and refuses to do any kind of work, and then invents some mythical illness to justify it. Possibly dresses in a slovenly manner. Maybe even uh, slops about the house all day in a bathroom. That is fantastic! Did I hit the nail on the head? On the head. You described him perfect. <laughs> him? <laughs> You're talking about my rotten brother-in-law. Brother-in-law, I see. Uh, uh, does this man live with you? Right from the altar. <laughs> when Arthur shook the rice off of his uh, jacket, that was the last food he brought into the house. <laughs> Well, Mr. Belmont, this obvious hostility indicates that your brother-in-law might be the irritant that is uh, causing you this insomnia. Yeah? Yes, and I think it might be a good idea if you brought him with you on your next visit. <laughs> Bring Arthur down here? <laughs> Nothing doing. You, uh, you don't want to take him into your confidence? No, I don't want to be seen with him in public. <laughs> Where do you think Stanley could be? The hot is getting cold and the cold is getting hot. He's been so sleepy. I hope he didn't have an accident. He might be in a hospital. If he is, we might as well start eating now. <laughs> probably take him all night just to fill out the forms. Arthur, he could be dead. Not Stanley. He'd have phoned. <laughs> I'm stuck. Hello, Stanley. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Ma. Fine. Hello, kid. Oh, Stanley, you had us all so worried we couldn't eat. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Didn't seem to bother the steam shovel. <laughs> I couldn't wait. My stomach was growling. Oh, yeah? Then why didn't you go out in the woods with the rest of the hyenas? Something's bothering you, Stanley. You're trying to hide it, but I can tell. I am not trying to hide it. It is him. <laughs> Me? 
Me? Yeah, you. I got repressed anger on you, plus unconscious guilt and neurotic symptoms resulting in a severe loss of shut-eye. Stanley, if I may speak for all of us, all of us don't know what you're talking about. It's just between Arthur, me, and the doctor. What doctor? It's the... It's the head doctor, the, the psychiatrist. You are going to a psychiatrist? Yeah. My firstborn? I told you he was acting a little bananas. Oh, yeah? Well, the doc says that you got to go down there with me, otherwise I could turn into a total fruit salad. If you're the one who's bonkers, why do I have to go? Because the doc said so, that's why. Can I come too, Stanley? <laughs> this is not a bus company dance. It's just a hard game. Oh, Stanley, I hope this didn't happen that time when I dropped you off the hamper. I care. Why don't you want to go to the psychiatrist? I think you should to help uh, poor Stanley. Uh, I don't trust them guys. They're nosy. Right away, he'll want it all about my sex life. So you'll take a minute and you'll tell him about it. Yes? Uh, send them in, please. Uh, <coughs> Stanley! Oh, hiya, Doc. Uh, this here is... Arthur, say hello to Doc. How do you do, Arthur? Uh, let's get it over with. Oh, come on. Ain't you going to say hello to Doc first? Hello, Doc. You want me to get on the couch? No. <laughs> No, the couch won't be necessary. Well, that's too bad. The only reason Arthur came over here was because he thought he could lie down. <laughs> Sitting will be just Will you please? Come over here. Take your hat off. Put your hat back on. <laughs> oh, come on. This is splendid. You are obviously recreating your home life for me. I like that. You like it so much? Why don't you live with him? <laughs> you hear that, Doc? That's the way he is. Always put me down. Will you dummy me up and let the doc talk? Oh, no, 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 Stanley. We must not bottle up Arthur's emotions. I want to hear how he feels from his own lips. Well, you got his lips at a good time. Usually they're wrapped around a fork. Very funny, Stan. You're hurting, aren't you, Arthur? Oh, that's nothing, Doc. I mean, you ought to hear him talk to me other times. Why don't you show me? Uh, uh, pretend that you are Stanley. Yeah, go ahead. I can't do that. Why not? Because how am I going to get a pot belly and go ball in such short notice? <laughs> go suck on that. Well, obviously, this is not going to work. There is a serious lack of communication here. Now, uh, the first thing that we must do is try to establish some contact between you. Now, I want both of you to stand up. Come, stand up, please. That's fine. Now, face each other. Oh. Now, Stanley, I'd like you to give Arthur a big hug. Oh. Hug Arthur. Shake hands. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Stanley, what did you feel? Mayonnaise. <laughs> Mayonnaise? Yeah, I had to bribe him with a tuna fish sandwich to get him over here. Well, I think I see the problem. Uh, Arthur, could you wait in the reception room, please? <laughs> Straighten him out, Doc. What? Meanwhile, I'll finish my sandwich. <laughs> oh. Now, Stan, don't be too long. Remember, you promised to buy me a malt or two. You see, Doc? I mean, this is how it is all the time. Buy me, clothe me, feed me, give me. Yes, yes, but Stanley, don't you see that the reason he acts this way is that you're making him feel unwanted, rejected. Hey. Yes, in his mind, he's a failure. Hey, in my mind, he's a failure. <laughs> but you can change all that. Me? How, Doc? By being his friend. Oh, geez, that sounds like shock treatment to me. Stanley, this will give him a sense of security. 
He'll get a job, you won't hate him, and you'll start sleeping like a baby. Oh, let me understand you. You are saying that for me to get some sleep, I gotta love Arthur and be his friend. That's right. All right, I'll try it. But next to loving Arthur, my insomnia is starting to look pretty good. <laughs> Here it is. The perfect job for Arthur at the zoo. Arthur! Oh, Arthur! Hurry up! Your breakfast is ready! Do you right down, Stan. I just finished taking a shower. Dinner? Arthur just took a shower. You see, Stanley, the psychiatrist was right. You being nice to Arthur is having a good effect on him. Well, it ain't having a good effect on me. I still can't sleep. All I think about is be nice to Arthur. Be nice to Arthur. Good morning, Arthur. My goodness, don't you look splendid in your bed, Thanks. I think it needs a little cleaning. Well, I'll be glad to take it down for you. And when I bring it back, there'll be a little something in the pocket for you, huh? <laughs> Jeez, Dan. You get to be a real nice brother-in-law. Wow, well, what are relatives for if not to be the best of friends, huh? <laughs> Ma, what is that? I got five sausages and Arthur only has three? Well, you said you should have the most food because you was working. Work? What's work? Any dummy can work. <laughs> right, Arthur? Ah, don't put yourself down, Stan. There are plenty of smart people working. What a sweet thing to say, Arthur. And just for that, here. Here's a nice sausage for you. And look at that. Huh? <laughs> hey, thanks, Dan. Look, Ma, Stan made my initial with the sausages. A for Arthur. Ain't that cute? You mind if I pick it up with my hand? No, no, go ahead. Fingers were invented before the fork. But who knows that? Better than you, Arthur. Eat, Arthur, eat. I want you to enjoy yourself. That's all I want. Uh, by the way, Arthur, do you, uh, do you like the zoo? <laughs> Oh, yeah. What I like uh, most about it is the animals. How would you like a lifetime pass to the zoo? A lifetime pass? Yeah, better than a pass. They'll pay you something, a little something every day just for going down there. Pay me? Yeah, I was reading where they need a broom and shovel man. That sounds like a job. I don't think so, Stan. Why not? Because I don't think it's right to uh, take away a job to somebody who really needs it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thoughtful, Arthur. Always thinking of the other guy. Hey, Stan. Yes, Arthur. Could you lend me five bucks? Oh. All right. Uh, here. Uh, tell me, Arthur. Uh, what happened to the five bucks I gave you yesterday? Oh, I bet it on a horse. He bet it? <laughs> now, what do you think? What? Wow. Came in last. <laughs> hey, listen, Arthur. You can't win them all, right? <laughs> hey. Did that hurt? Yeah, it hurt. I'm very sorry. Here's two extra dollars. It was worth it. <laughs> Ain't it nice how relaxed Arthur's been lately? Yeah, that's his second nap today. <laughs> I think it's because Stanley suddenly taken such a liking to him. Yeah, well, I always say you can always find something good in everyone. Even in Arthur. <laughs> Hiya, Ma. Hiya, kid. Hi, Stanley. Shh. Hello, Stanley. How are you? Not so good. I tell you the truth, I'm still so tired because... <laughs> Stanley? I can't help it, huh? I can't stand being his friend no more. But, Stanley, I think it's working. What's working? What's working? I've been nice to him two weeks now, and he's still laying on his back. The only thing working on him is his adenoids. Listen to that. But look. Look at what he was reading. The help wanted ads. Oh, gee, that's terrific. You see, Stanley, it's just like your father always used to say. You can give a man a smile. You can give a man a tear. But when it comes right down to it, who knows? <laughs> sure, Mom. Mm. Well, 
I guess it feels good to get rid of that. Oh, hiya, Stan. I didn't hear you come in. Arthur, you couldn't have heard a Sherman tank come in. <laughs> I like when you josh with me. It makes me feel wanted. Wanted. Oh, that's good. That's good, Arthur. What do I hear about the help wanted? Oh, and tell him, Olive. Well, Arthur has been job hunting all day. That's wonderful. I mean, it's not important, though, you know, but that, that's wonderful. <laughs> any, uh, any luck? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And it's all the kind of you, Stan. <laughs> On account of me? Yeah. Oh, shucks. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> oh, well, it's just that, you know, you've been nice to me, and uh, I always had the feeling that you didn't like me because you were the only one in the family with a job. That ain't true, Arthur. I knew from the first, if I had a little patience with you, you'd change. And sure enough, only seven years later, uh, you changed. <laughs> That's all due to you, Stan. I mean, you make me feel good about myself. Good. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad about the job, too. Now, tell me, uh, what does it pay? 130 a week. 130 a week? That's wonderful. What kind of job is it? Cocktail waitress. A cocktail waitress. <laughs> For a job for Olive. Yeah. You know, I never wanted to be known as one of those guys uh, whose wife worked. Oh. But now, you and the shrink took away all that feeling of guilt. I should have known. I should have known. Every time I think you're going to get on your own two feet, you're back on all fours again. Biting the very hand that feeds you. Watch it, Stan. You're threatening my self-confidence. No, I'm threatening your life. <laughs> psychiatrist did you what are you talking about i'll tell you with you being mean to me again you're gonna get your insomnia back i don't care arthur i don't care because now that i hate you it's gonna be a pleasure to be awake <laughs> you hear me My fault? I got insomnia. That's marvelous. Here I fall asleep for the first time in two weeks, and then you start with the... Would you turn that off? Just a minute. When you're watching Gunga Din. Gunga Din? Yeah. Did Gunga climb up to the tower yet with his bugle? No. It's coming up. Oh, that's my favorite part. Hey, Stan. Wow. This is like old times. What old times? Like this morning when you were nice to me. How could I be nice to you, Arthur? You're always doing something to upset me. And I don't mean to. I know. Uh, I know. In fact, I'd like to make it up to you. Yeah? How? You want half of your lunch for tomorrow? <laughs> seen everything on your favorite TV show? Hazel's sure a take charge maid. It ain't all ordinary and good looking butlers, you know. Always getting a head start on things in the Baxter household. Hazel! Literally. Hazel seems to run head first whenever she feels the need to rush. Maybe she was a track star in her early days. Take a closer look at Antenna TV.